Audra at Home is filmed in front of a live Pitbull audience. Good morrow! What is up to all my queerdos, weirdos, and brohos? Merry meet! So as you can see, once again, my face is La Belle. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is the name of a gentleman's club. It's not, it's not a gentleman's club, it's for the ladies, but the gentlemen do the... <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> that was excessive. Any who's it's, we are here today for a, another uh, horror retelling. <laughs> I do mine where I do a voiceover because, listen, I am a person who has ADHD. I have ADHD. Trying to talk, tell the story, and do my makeup all at the same time just results in a massive amount of chaos, unless I know the story by heart, or I'm on a rant, in which case, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but since I do not have the talent and skill of scripting uh, and doing multiple things at one time, this is what you get. All right, so in today's video, I will be using some things that Lethal Cosmetics sent me in PR. I'm very, very excited. Y'all, y'all, I, listen, Teresa got her little hands on hers before I did. She started using it. Um, I, like, I swatched it for patrons and channel members. That was a good time. Uh, I cannot wait to start playing with this. Like, I'm stoked. I'm like, ooh, bitch, this is gonna be a good time. And y'all, I've been wearing these blushes. They're so freaking pretty. They're shimmery blushes. They're so pretty. Um, I'm probably gonna use this one or this one, but like this one's my favorite. And so, listen, it's gonna be a party. That's what we're gonna use um, mainly for the eyes. I'm probably gonna use the exact same foundation as I have been using because I love it. And it is so hot and I'm not planning on going outside anymore now. Anymore. Today, anyways, because I can help it. So what is today's video going to be about? Well, sometimes people ask me, Audra, what got you into horror? And um, <clears throat> the reality is that it was Care Bears. So <laughs> this is one of them, and I'm gonna do the second one. Uh, I will do the second one. Uh, if this video actually gets 150 likes, I will do the second one on, on the second Care Bears movie. These movies, are horror films, don't care what you say. I actually have a whole series of like cartoons that are horror, so really, if you if this gets 150 likes, then we will be doing another one later on down the line of you know children's cartoons that are really horror films. So today we're going to be doing the Care Bears movie, the original, and I'm very excited about it. When was that made? Because I was born in 80. Look, shh, I know, I, you're like, you couldn't have possibly, look at your skin, baby. I know! Please hold. All right, y'all, the Care Bears movie was made in 1985. So we are really going way back into the horror analogs and my childhood. And I hope you enjoy this ride. As usual, I might pop up throughout the retelling to talk about the makeup that I'm slapping on my face. I said slapping. That is a word now. You're welcome. Use it in a sentence whenever you choose. All right. Let us go on ahead. Let us get started. Let's do makeup. Yay! I'm so excited. Play with makeup is my bang. Content warning. This retelling will include spoilers, cartoon sorcery, dogs and cats living together, and is definitely not for children. Unless, of course, you choose to have your children watch this, in which case, do you. Enjoy. Okay, so this starts out so sweet with a beautiful little song, like Carolot is a place that we all know. We never do lose it. It's sung by Carol King. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, normally I do give a full detailed retelling, but I really want to highlight the scary part. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you like the quick gist of this movie, which is that there are some orphans whose parents have left named Jason and Kim, and they have no friends, and the Care Bears come to try to help them out. All right, and at, they end up going on like a whole mission because there's another person who doesn't have any friends, and his name, is Nicholas. And so the Care Bears are gonna fix this situation. That is the gist, okay? There's also an evil sorceress. And that's where the horror comes in. Okay, so I just wanted to set that up for you. So, you know, if there's parts of this movie that I skip, just, you know, live your best life. I'm doing the best that I can with the little limited time that I have. I am a human. Anyways, all right, so the setup. Mr. Cherrywood is, I guess, the owner of said orphanage. I don't really know. And he's there with all these adorable kids and he's like trying to put them to bed because they're all orphans, obviously, with Miss Cherrywood. This isn't weird. So 
He's trying to put these kids to bed, and they're like, Sorry, Mr. Che, what story? And he's like, all right, I'll tell you the story. And it's apparently the same story he tells them every night about the orphans, Kim and Jason, which I mentioned earlier. Anyway, he's going to tell the story. And then this is so freaking cute. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, my God, it's so fucking cute. Story hat, story hat. Story hat acquired, Mr. Cherrywood begins telling the tale, which I am now going to tell to you. So Kim and Jason are lonely and sad because their parents apparently left and they don't want to make friends. And so, of course, the Care Bears can't have that because they believe that caring is freaking freaking sharing, damn it. And they're going to get Kim and Jason to care. So anyways, they are having a hard time because Kim and Jason don't want to be friends, right? And Secret Bear, for reasons beyond me, I mean, I get it that he's Secret Bear, but like, it's really, really strange. Do these bears even have a sexuality? Anyway, we're going to move on. I'm going to say that they're all agender for the most part. Um, Non-binary bears. Okay, we're going to move on. Anyways, they show up. And here's the thing that cracks me up. First of all, they were driving a cloud car. And I have not yet to this day really figured out the essence of a cloud car. Like, how does it work? We're going to move on. And so they're trying to be friends and they're like, Well, I'll tell you what we know about people you care for. They always let you down. And of course the bears are like, what the hell? Now we are going to move immediately on to the next part, which is Nicholas. And you're going to find out why I'm saying it like that anyway. So Nicholas is like this super nerd, odd, strange, but he's like way into magic, which is cool. Like do your thing, Nicholas, enjoy your magic. And he is apprenticing underneath. (laughs) I'm so sorry. I'm trying not to laugh. Mr. Fettuccine. (laughs) They named this man, Mr. Fettuccine. Anyway, he's apprenticing underneath Mr. Fettuccine. Unfortunately, Nicholas is not the most coordinated of folk and he has a hard time. And also Mr. Fettuccine is not a particularly caring person. And so you kind of watch Nicholas like struggling you know, to like get his ish together. And Tender Heart Bear is on his way to see Nicholas because he also knows that like Nicholas needs a friend. And he's also driving a cloud car. I, I seriously do not understand the cloud cars. Like why can't the Care Bears just arrive places? Completely freaks me out every time that that doesn't happen. Like why is this a situation? Okay, I'm gonna let go of this cloud car situation. Anyway, Mr. Fettuccine has like made Nicholas pull in this truck and inside this trunk is a book that comes sliding out like some kind of like weird ma- like it's actually kind of creepy the way this book just comes like sliding out and then like the cover pops off of it undressing the book if you may now i need y'all to prepare yourselves because this is when the things get really real real i'm trying not to curse because it's a care bears movie but this is when everything gets very scary so all of a sudden You know, Nicholas is over there crying a little bit, and then you hear this. Nicholas. Who's there? Y'all, that book is talking to him. The book is an evil sorceress, and it just gets progressively worse. So basically, the sorceress is promising him that she can help him to make friends. And you know, obviously, Tenderheart ain't about it. But Tenderheart is stuck under Mr. Fettuccini's legs. That sounded worse than I had intended it to sound. But he's trying to hide because obviously, uh, I guess adults can't know that Care Bears exist. But kids can. That's never really been fully actualized or realized. I think I'm using both of those things wrong. Anyway. Now Tenderheart is fully aware that this like sorceress is kind of laying the smack down on Nicholas and Tenderheart is like, oh no. Anyway, the sorceress is over here trying to convince Nicholas to open her up. Meanwhile, back up in care a lot. Uh, Grumpy Bear, my favorite bear by far. All he wants to do is chill, have a good time, maybe fix some shit. And then we still won't know what'll happen until we give it another test. So he's trying to fix the Rainbow Rescue Reader. Rainbow Rescue, I can never fully remember the name of it. Rain, Rainbow Rescue, be- it's the same thing as from Star Trek where you beam somebody up. Anyway, he's trying to fix that thing. And he goes and finds like a little star in it and he ends up being like, okay, I gotta go get this other part. So he takes off, baby hugs, baby tugs, 
enter. And they're sitting there being little badass baby bears, little badass kids. And so Baby Hugs asks Baby Tugs, like, what the hell does this do? And Baby Tugs is like, girl, uh, it makes bubbles. And she's like, damn, Tugs, you know everything. And she's so excited about it. And she's like, well, what kind of bubbles does it make? And he's like, oh. Square bubbles. Anyway, you came for the drama and the horror, not this whole retelling of the entire story. The point is... You need to know about the rescue rainbow, rainbow beam, the rainbow rescue beam, the rescue rainbow beam, whatever. You need to know about that because at some point they use that and that's how they end up in the forest of feelings where they run into, you guessed it, the Care Bear Cousins. But that's later on, the, on down the line. I'm here to give you the horror. Let's go back to Nicholas. Nicholas now wakes up because he fell into the trunk after that book started talking to him, which I would have too, son, because that shit is scary. Having a whole like book just be like, Nicholas. Anyway, now he's getting into it with this book and this book is promising him like, I will help you have friends. I'm going to do all this. And of course, Cinderheart is like, Nicholas, don't listen to this damn book. I'll be your friend. But it is too late. Nicholas has unlocked and opened the book and this bitch comes out green face, lashes, lips, and cheekbones on point. And for reference, one of my favorite parts about this book is that every time the page is turned, her face just stays in the middle. She is looking good, good. She is ready to go. All right. Anyway, Tenderheart finally gets free because Nicholas starts doing some goofy spells that she tells him to do. Read this Gazork. And yes, all of the spells will be like goofy gobbledygook. But the point is, is that she is having Nicholas use spells to essentially put Mr. Fettuccini <laughs> to sleep so that he, Nicholas, can take over the amazing Fettuccini's magic show and he's like i'm not good at magic that's nicholas he's like i'm not good at magic and she's like i'll help you son and so now we're just going to go on over into the magic show which we all know how this is going to go right anytime some sorceress book comes to life and starts helping you out it ain't no help fam it ain't no help so she's doing all this shit making him look stupid his magic tricks are going wrong and all these kids are laughing at him and he is super duper embarrassed. I mean, I would be too. I'm trying to do magic water spilling on me and everybody's laughing and he's looking at her like, make them stop laughing at me. And she's like, all right. So she flippity flops the pages and she's like, read from here. Next thing you know, this boy done done a spell. And now I, I don't really understand this spell, but it just apparently makes these kids mean and like they get bags under their eyes and start pulling one another's hair and putting popcorn containers on each other's head. They're just a bunch of a-holes at this point. So I want some mats in this look because like I feel like I made like an all sparkly last time because I did. And <laughs> so of course I'm going to dip into my Blend Bunny blends palette. Um to do whatever it is that I'm going to do. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen here? It's going to be whatever it's going to be. So, you know, I also hope that you're enjoying the retelling and understanding where I'm coming from and that this is horror. But they're just like not good kids, right? They're like now nasty. And because they're mad, it jacks up care a lot. All right. Care a lot starts breaking down and everybody's super worried because they're like, oh, no, not care a lot. Don't let care a lot get destroyed. Anyway, Kim and Jason have found parents to be back to them, but they're not going to go because they're going to help their friends help Nicholas. That's where we are right now. Care a lot is in shambles. Oh, no. Everything's broken, faded, ruined. Nicholas is being bamboozled. This is only the beginning. But they still got to get their butts down to earth and help him anyway, because that is how friendship works. You still have to, you know, to sometimes help your friends. I mean, the, there's things that the Care Bears have wrong on this. Like sometimes, you know, you just grow apart. But in this instance, since Nicholas is essentially trying to destroy the world, uh, yeah, they're going to they're going to go down and they're going to help him. So they're like, "Let's use the rainbow rescue beam. That'll be quick and easy. We'll get back to the circus. All eyes on me in the center of the ring just like a circus." Anyways, and the caring meter is jacked because obviously like all these people just stopped caring and it's, you know, the sorceress's spell that turns them kids into bag-having assholes. So, 
they're like, let's use the rainbow rescue beam. They going to send the kids down. Cause them kids are like, no, we ain't going to be adopted. We're going to help y'all. Like I said previously. And so of course they're in the rainbow rescue beam, but then another earthquake shakes care a lot. Who knows where they went? They went to the forest feelings. I'm just going to spoil it now. They went to the forest feelings and then which they were supposed to go to earth. You know, it was supposed to beam them to earth, but instead force of feelings. So then they're like, they got a cloud boat. Y'all, these cloud vehicles and like modes of transportation keep jacking me up. Like my brain can't really wrap my mind around like the density of the cloud in relation to it floating on water. I'm going to let it go because I'm getting too weird about it. And But I can't, but I can't, but I can't. All right. So anyway, the rest of the Care Bears are like, we're going to get on this boat. And we've never been on this boat before. That's the other thing. They ain't never even been on the boat. But they're like, we've never been on this boat. But we're going to take this goofy boat. And we're going to, like, find everybody. Anyway, they just sail along. They run into the Care Bear Cousins, which they weren't the Care Bear Cousins at the first start of this. But this is where we first ever see the Care Bear Cousins. They run into the Care Bear Cousins. And this is where things really start messing up in the forest of feelings. All right. They in the forest of feelings. And you know what? This is a cute meeting. Secret bear says not to worry about falling. Worry about the lion instead. Lion! So when Kim and Jason and friend bear and secret bear first meet the Care Bear cousins, this first interaction is freaking adorable. Wow. The monkey can talk. <laughs> what happened to all your fur? We... We never had any fur. That's impossible. Every monkey has fur. And who said they were monkeys? Hmm? Anyway, they sing a delightful song about the forest of feelings, Carolot and Earth, uh, and how they're all different homes. Bloody do. Forest of feelings, Carolot and Earth are in far apart. But then they run up on this tree. Bebe, when I tell you this used to give me nightmares because the evil spirit has Nicholas sent some shit off uh and 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 it gets up in this tree y'all I cannot I can't deal with it this tree gets like so rambunctious rude ravenous and I didn't appreciate it all right but luckily swift heart rabbit comes along and he ends up getting the tree all tied up and then the tree is gone when the spirit leaves the tree like this I don't even you know what I don't it's just so, uh, remember I was five, first of all. So don't start being weird. I was five years old. That was so frightening. I did not appreciate it. All right. Then after all of that, they, the spirit then gets into this bird. So this bird is flying around. Now it's got some kind of spirit and it. it's trying to knock these kids out, like out, out for real, for real. And I'm not having that either. Luckily, the rest of the Care Bears show up on their fun little boat. And guess what? They have a friend. The raccoon. I can never remember his name. Bright eyes, raccoon, bright, right. Because I'm terrible with names. But any who's it's, the raccoon shows up and he was with them. And now they done defeated the spirit again, thwarted, thwarted them. All right. And the spirit isn't having it because she's just like, no, we got to get everybody because like Nicholas is over here like, you know, we could just let it chill. Like, who cares if them kids don't care? We got most everybody who bothered me and I'm feeling good. And the spirit's like, well, I'm not. Everyone must be taught the lesson. There's no turning back. <laughs> I just want to take this moment to say once again, once again, I was five. This shit is terrifying. Look at them laughing, evil laughing together. Absolutely not. All right, so now we are starting to get to the dramatic climax of this very intense film, okay? Uh, I don't want to hear any laughing because when you're five and you see an evil sorceress living out of a book, face intact, just green glow of fury coming off of her, like this makes an impression. Anyway, the Care Bears and their newly found Care Bear cousins arrive at the circus. All eyes on me in the center of the ring, just like a circus. Okay, I'm going to try not to do that, but it's an association. Uh, they've also brought Kim and Jason, and they are here for the final freaking showdown. It's the final showdown. Da -da 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 I know it's countdown, but for these purposes, I said showdown. Um, anyways. So now they're going to all split up and try to find 
where in the hell is Nicholas so that they can stop him? Also, something I completely forgot to tell you a long time ago, but like Tenderheart put uh, Jason in charge of this key and it's the key that locks the book back up. So I just wanted y'all to know that in case you were like, uh, but that, where, where did the key come from? You know, Tenderheart picked it up a long time ago after the key was used to open her up. Listen, every time I say open her up, it kind of gives me like, I know, listen, listen. All right. Now, of course, Nicholas is trying to find Kim and Jason as well, because in order to destroy Carolot and all caring in the world, he must get them to also what not care. So this sequence of events, listen, I already didn't really enjoy the circus. All eyes on me in the center of the ring, just like a circus. I had to do it. I'm so sorry. Just let me live my life. All right. I'm letting you live yours. Let me live mine. So anyways, they're wandering about trying to find him. Nicholas is gathering the ingredients for this final spell. Just wandering around like, ha 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 ha. This kid, like seriously, and everybody's hiding from him because he is not nice. And he's doing all these things, trapping Care Bears. He's still got them bags under his eyes because he's super duper evil. And um, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, especially him evil laughing every moment. I cannot even handle it. Grabbing spider webs. Although that did help me. Sorry, I'm not I'm right now walking in a spider wheel. Also, I did want to say, if you ever have any questions about any of the makeup I'm wearing, just like you can ask in the comments, I will tell you. I'm not gatekeeping anything, but I literally, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't link everything. I'm so sorry. Them's the rules. <laughs> but on my eyebrows, I'm actually using the Nima Tang Dose of Colors uh, collab, her orange one. And um, I'm kind of living for this. It was like an accident, like a happy accident. All right. All right, back into the movie. So anyways, he's grabbing all the ingredients. Care Bear's hiding. This sequence where they go through this little like fun house, too much. I cannot handle it. I absolutely hated it. And to this day, despise. I don't, I don't like any of that. I don't like fun houses. I don't like fun house mirrors. I've seen way too many horror films with those included. And I'm good with never experiencing it again in my life. Ever, ever. There's also a point where the Care Bears pretend to be like uh, stuffed animals, which is actually kind of adorable. It gives me the giggles. So here we go. Nicholas is running around. He got magic coming out his damn fingers at this point, y'all. And he is not playing. In fact, he's getting so into it. Even Swift Heart Rabbit, we think he's done, but luckily. Huh? Icky sticky bubble gum. The last ingredient I need for my final spell. That's right, y'all. Nicholas Dunn found his final ingredient. Now, at some point, Kim and Jason were hiding. And so, of course, everybody's like trying to find them all at the same time. Now, remember, Jason got that key. So anyway, at this point, we're running into you. Everybody's looking for Kim and Jason. How some ever. You have Nicholas doing another nonsense ass spell. But look, doesn't he look... Listen, I'm not going to say it because it's a child movie, but he look a little... A little, little. Anyway, looks aside, Nicholas is looking a look and he is finishing up the spell. He's got to pick up his shoe and get the bubble gum on the bottom. And he's starting to have some second thoughts because he's realizing like, maybe I don't want like everybody to get jacked up. I just kind of wanted friends. And I feel like this is going a little far book sorceress. And she's like, uh, -uh we are doing this spell. And he's, you know, getting a little nervous and Tenderheart even comes like, Nicholas, don't do it. But you know what? He ends up just doing it anyway, because Nicholas is hard headed. Nicholas don't like to listen. And now look at you. Now look at you, Nicholas, you got bags and you know, you're a little bit, you're a little bit evil. I feel like you need some help, son. Nicholas, you're too late, too late. The last spell is cast. The final spell is cast. All hope is lost, or is it? Because Kim and Jason would still care. Anyway, that evil spirit is on a tear. She is jacking these bears up left and right. They try to care bear stare him, but he ain't having it because the spirit just whaps them out the way. She's like, you don't care, and like loses her entire mind. And that actually makes sense considering she's disembodied. So I wouldn't be a little crazy as well if all I had was a head in a book. Anyway, Kim and Jason 
Arrive. And they start telling him like, we know what it's like to not have any friends, but until we met the Care Bears, we didn't know it could be any better. So then Nicholas is like, you know what? I think, I think I might, I think I might care. Kim and Jason are there to be friends with him. And Jason still has the key. So of course, what do you think is gonna happen? That's right. Jason's gonna get over there and help Nicholas close the book. And he does, and they're able to lock it up. And it's fantastic and fabulous. And guess who Mr. Cherrywood really is? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I believe that it is in fact Nicholas. And Kim is his wife, because they were like the same age. And Kim and Jason were obviously brother and sister, so that would be super gross. And then the movie ends with like a super adorable like rap tune. And the kids always fall asleep before, but it ends with like a super cool little rap tune. Like remember 85, all right? So like, I'm just gonna give you a little taste right here. It's great to be in that Kevin family. I was feeling a little weird with the lip. I wanted to do something just a little bit different, a little bit strange. So this is what we got. <laughs> All right, so I hope y'all enjoyed the retelling of the Care Bears movie, which y'all, you know, this is, it's dangerous. It was scary, right? Like five-year-old me seeing that, that was my first horror film. It was frightening, it was terrifying. Also, I did throw on the Kiss Magnetic Lashes. I prefer two coats of the magnet. I let the first one dry while I'm like doing the rest of my makeup, as you saw, and then I will come in and put another layer on. Uh, it comes off pretty easily, so if you want more videos or you wanna talk about these Kiss Magnetic Lashes, I guess we can do that at some point in time, maybe, who knows, who cares? Anyways, thank y'all for watching this. If you did and you haven't already, please give this video a, P a big thumbs up please consider subscribing because it's like, you know, it's an okay time. Sometimes it's a great time. Uh, and as usual, this video, as is all of my videos, is sponsored by my wonderful patrons and channel members who, without whom I would not be able to make these videos in particular. I love making them. They take a little bit of time. Uh, they take a lot of editing. So I appreciate y'all for supporting me in this endeavor. If you want to join my Patreon and all that stuff, uh, it's in the description box. And y'all, I'm really like, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Keep all like good thoughts towards me for August 14th, all right? That is when everything should just like, for me. And, and then we'll be, uh, uh. Anyways, <laughs> remember it costs zero, zero dollars to be kind. It's so good for your soul because if you don't take care of it, I'm sure shit coming for yours. And as I've mentioned previously, it is so hot, I don't care. Like if you do one thing, one thing, it's over for you, babes. Because like AC is expensive now and I really need the souls to help keep me cool and keep my bills down. So until next time, XOXO, <laughs> got the girl. <laughs> also, don't forget to drop your suggestions in the description box, not the description box, in the comments. <laughs>